Welcome to Next Games, a guide to ninja series. This time covering Blade Chi, 2, and Teki Elite gear sets. I will first give an overview of hybrid weapon skills, then introduce you to the hybrid weapon skill spreadsheet that Simon says was nice enough to make for the community, tell you the situations in which you'll use these weapon skills, and then lastly, go into the Elite gear sets. Now, hybrid weapon skills can be tricky to both gear for and utilize, as they are normally only useful in certain situations. However, in those situations, these weapon skills can deal some of the most devastating damage that Ninja has to offer. A hybrid weapon skill is one that has both a physical and magical component, and you need to maximize the damage of both in order to get your hybrid weapon skills to perform well. Now, Blade Chi has a stat multiplier of 30% strength and 30% intelligence and is a two-hit earth elemental attack. Because it's two hits, it will be your most powerful option of the three. Its FTP multipliers are 0.5 at 1,000 TP, 1.375 at 2,000 TP, and 2.25 at 3,000 TP. So you definitely want to try and go for that 3,000 TP for your best damage numbers. Now for Blade 2, it has a stat multiplier of 40% and an intelligence multiplier of 40%, so 10% more than Blade Chi. It's also an ice elemental attack, and its FTP multipliers start at 0.5, just like with Chi, but end at 2.5, so a little bit stronger than Chi. So all of that makes up for a little bit of the fact that it's only a single hit instead of a two-hit weapon skill. Now Blade Teki has, sadly, the worst traits of both of these, which include the lower stat multiplier and the lower FTP multipliers. It also includes the fact that this is only a single-hit weapon skill instead of a two-hit weapon skill. Now, Teki is going to do water damage, so that's really the only time you're ever going to use it is when you strictly need to do a water-based attack. These weapon skills' best damage potential is achieved with the Hishi Shuroken in your main hand, as it will give you a 500 TP bonus to all of your weapon skills. Along with the Moonshade Earring in your ear, it will make sure that you are always using Chi at a minimum of 1750 TP. Now, the best offhand weapon for weapon skill damage alone ends up being the Gokutai. However, the Hitaki is the best option for overall best DPS as it will boost your TP by 1000, making it so that you're almost always weapon skilling at that 2.25 to 2.5 FTP number. Now hybrid weapon skills can be difficult to parse due to the complex nature in which you can use them, and sadly Langley's spreadsheet that we all use for our other weapon skill gear sets isn't set up for working with hybrid weapon skills. Fortunately, Simon Says was nice enough to come up with a spreadsheet to help us determine the best gear sets to use. Please note that the spreadsheet is not as full featured as Langley's, so things like accuracy and buffs are not automatically calculated, but it does give you a good picture of what gear gives you the best boost. If you really want those answers though, the sheet does offer you a way to manually input some of those stat boosts so that you can see what the output of DPS numbers would be. Now, it is this spreadsheet, along with my own independent tests, to verify the results that I've used for my gear suggestions in this video. Some of the gear is Herculean Augment gear that can be difficult to get due to the random nature of Augment, so I'll be sure to list the closest non-Augment alternative so that you can have options while you work on those Augments. Also note that there is a huge amount to be gained once the initial gear from the set is in place. So this is one of those gear sets where if you gear it correctly, huge increases in DPS can be had. Now hybrid weapon skills can't achieve their full potential just any time. You need to make sure that you have substantial attack to overcome the defense of the enemy you're fighting, and the most important thing is that the magic defense of that mob is low. If there is normal magic defense, then you will commonly do decent damage if your attack is high enough. Now if the magic defense starts getting added, or the mob is naturally strong to elemental attacks, the damage will fall dramatically to usually only a few hundred damage per weapon skill. Now likewise, if something like malaise is used to reduce the magic defense of the mob that you are fighting, then reaching the 99,000 damage limit cap is certainly possible with this weapon skill. Other situations, such as pulling blue statues and Dynamis Juno to further increase hybrid damage also is a good situational use for these hybrid weapon skills to excel over their physical counterparts. Likewise, mobs such as raptors with low magic defense will naturally also take increased damage from these weapon skills, where mobs that are strong to magic will take very little damage from these weapon skills. Blade Chi can also be used as an opener for both multi-step light and dark skill chains. For instance, Chi, 
Retsu, He, He will do a nice four step darkness, or Chi, Retsu, Shun, and then Metsu or Kamu will give you a light skill chain. Also note that even though these gear sets aren't individually designed for other weapon skills, they can commonly be swapped in for hybrid and elemental weapon skills on Dagger and Great Katana. Obviously, if you're looking to use those options frequently, it may make sense to use a gear set specifically around that weapon skill stat bonuses, but otherwise, this should do decent damage for any of those weapon skills, saving you the trouble of making additional gear sets for them. Now, for stat priorities, to get the most out of these weapon skills, you really need a mix of all of these things, but the general order of importance seems to be magic attack, followed by weapon skill damage, then multi-attack, then intelligence, followed closely by strength. Now it's assumed you will have good attack and accuracy when you will be using these, because otherwise the damage is in general going to be very poor. I'm now going to go ahead and show you all the gear for the gear sets in Blade Chi, then after we're done doing that, I'll show you the DPS comparisons between them so you get an idea of just how much DPS can be gained by adding some gear here. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the main weapon. Like I already stated, the best in slot here is definitely going to be the Hishi Shuroken with its TP bonus of 500 and magic damage boost of 186. There is no alternate I can really recommend, but of course if you don't happen to have a Hishi, a Gokutai in your main hand could also potentially work as well, but the damage won't be nearly as high. Now if used in your offhand instead, that Gokutai is going to give you your best single hit weapon damage, meaning your highest weapon skill damage numbers. However, your best overall DPS will be achieved by using the Hitaki, which will give you a TP bonus of 1000. Obviously, if you're already using a Gokutai in your main hand because you don't have a Hishi, you could use a Tourette here, which will also give you a very nice boost to your damage. That'll bring us to our ammo slot, where there's only a single option you should go with, which is the Seething Bomblet plus 1, augmented through Odyssey with Strength plus 10. That brings us to the head slot. We are always going to want to use the Mochizuki Hatsuburi plus 3 as your best in-slot option. Now, if for whatever reason you happen to get really lucky, it is possible to get a Herculean Helm with the Dark Matter Augment on it of Weapon Skill Damage 10 and Magic Attack 40. If you happen to get those Dream Augments or close to it, you can beat the Mochizuri Hatsuburi plus 3 in damage. For the next slot, the best in-slot option is the Ninja Notowa plus 2 with its Physical Damage Limit plus 10%. If you don't happen to have that, or have it at rank 25 yet, you can use the Forza Gorget in the meantime. For one of the earring slots, you always want to use the Lugra earring plus one. Augmented through Odyssey, it will give you your best DPS output in any situation. For the other ear, if you want the best overall weapon skill damage, go with the Friamzi earring. However, if you want the best overall DPS, go with the Moonshade earring with its DPS boost of 250. This brings us to the body slot, where we do have a few options. The best in slot option is going to be the Herculean Vest with Fernstone Augments of Weapon Skill Damage 5 and Magic Attack 35, which is the highest you can achieve with the Fernstones. Now if you don't have those Augments, you could go with a Geave Doublet as your next best option for DPS here, followed by a Rawhide Vest. Lastly, you could get a Dark Matter Augment on your Herculean Vest for up to Weapon Skill Damage 10, Magic Attack 40, just like with the headpiece, to achieve your maximum overall DPS potential. Now for the hand slot. The Herculean Gloves, augmented with the Fernstone for Weapon Skill Damage 5, Magic Attack 35 would be your best in slot option. Now if you can't achieve those augments, the Leline Gloves with the augments of Magic Accuracy 15, Magic Attack 15, and Accuracy 15 would be your next best option. And of course those Dream Dark Matter augments of Weapon Skill Damage 10, Magic Attack 40, are an option here once again. Now let's move on to the ring slot where there is no alternatives for either of the two fingers. In one of the fingers you want to use the gear ring and in the other the Epaminota's ring to achieve your best overall DPS. As always the Andartia's mantle is what you want to use for your back slot this time with the augments of strength 30, magic accuracy 20, magic damage 20, and weapon skill damage plus 10 percent. Note that if you wanted to sacrifice a little bit of damage you could make this an accuracy and attack piece as well and still get relatively the same numbers. Next, the waist slot with the Orpheus Sash is definitely king. Now if you can't afford this off the auction house, another option is the Fosia Belt, but you will lose several thousand damage on your weapon skills. For the leg slot, 
You want the Mochizuki Hakama plus three as your best in slot option. The only real alternative is the Geave trousers. And just like with the other Herculean pieces, it is possible to achieve the Dark Matter Augments of Weapon Skill Damage 10, Magic Attack 40 here. Let's move on to the last slot. Here, the Herculean boots with the Fernstone Augments of Weapon Skill Damage 5, Magic Attack 35 would be the best in slot option. If you can't get those Augments yet, then Adamar Gamish's plus one on path B will be your next best option. This is of course also the fifth and final spot that we can get those Dark Matter Dream Augments of Weapon Skill Damage 10, Magic Attack 40. Now let's go ahead and break down how much Weapon Skill Damage each of these sets can do that we just talked about so you can see the disparagement and how much difference there is in damage. I am now going to show you the average Weapon Skill Damage numbers achieved with each of these setups. We'll start with the best weapon skill damage achieved with a Gokutai and Freyumzi earring and not worrying about your best overall DPS. When you're purely focusing on weapon skill damage, then you will be able to achieve almost 58,000 damage on average per weapon skill without any Herculean augments. Now my particular setup has some Herculean augments and as you can see my DPS has increased to 62,500 roughly. Now if you do maximum Fernstone Herculean Augments, meaning the ones that I discussed in this video as best in slot, that will put you at 68,247. So we've already gone up over 11,000 damage from the no Herculean setup to the Fernstone setup. Now here's the huge jump. If we then somehow can pull off any of those Dark Matter Augments, we can increase our DPS to a maximum of almost 90,000 damage on average per weapon skill pretty insane. Now let's talk about the best overall DPS numbers. These are the ones I actually recommend that you'd use because of course those other numbers are nice and big but this setup here is the one that will give you the best overall DPS numbers because you're not waiting nearly twice as long to weapon skill because of all the extra TP items you're adding in mainly the Hitaki and the Moonshade Earring. In this situation your no Herculean setup will be giving you almost 47,000 damage that's obviously, as you can see, about 11,000 less than our best weapon skill damage setup. 51,000 damage in the setup I have right now. A maximum of almost 56,000 damage with the Fern Herculean setup. And 74,000 damage nearly with the Dark Matter Herculean setup. So it does end up being about 15,000 damage less. But overall, it's higher DPS because, again, you have to wait nearly twice as long to achieve those DPS numbers with the best weapon skill damage than you do with the best overall DPS damage numbers. In the description of this video, you will find two links. One is a direct link to the Simon Says spreadsheet that will be updated if and when he ever updates it with further information. The second link will be to the spreadsheet that I use specifically for this video that has some additional gears added in that we discussed in this video that Simon's does not have. Thanks to Simon for creating the spreadsheet. It definitely made determining what gears were best a whole lot easier. For our next and final weapon skill video in a guide to ninja series, I will be covering Savage Blade. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy.